to the closing session of the conference. Here it is. <laughs> We've made it. You've made it. <laughs> Yeah, and I would like to start with uh, congratulations to our uh, hosts and the organizing team, for, uh, which did a real great, great job having us here and online and helping us with everything. So thank you. Thank you so much once again. And thank you, Anne and Chuck, for giving us this opportunity to come here to Miami and have this wonderful conference. And yeah, and I would like to start because I'm here uh, uh, standing um, between uh, this session and the drink. So <laughs> I will do this shortly. And I would like to introduce the, the new uh, board of directors. And um, this year we have uh, uh, Myself, Chuck, Donna, Gerda, Jill, Lars, Ujala, and Kate. And from uh, since uh, 2023, we will have a new secretary, Kate Robinson. And we will uh, and we uh, thank Donna for serving to the board as a treasurer and then as a secretary. And we will have four new board members in January 2023. And it's Cara Jones, Liliana Lucci, Michelle Blake, and Sinwan Lee. Uh, the, the first IATL conference was uh, in Delft in 1961. Uh, the first virtual conference of IATL was last year in Porto. And the first hybrid IATL conference is this year in Miami. And I would like to invite Lars Egelen to the, to the podium to give you some highlights from this year's conference. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm sorry that you will have to wait a little for the drinks. <laughs> it's much to, to talk about. And uh, I will say that I'm, I feel totally calm about this summary because I've learned today uh, that the, the courage to be imperfect. And I've also, I've also learned that wellness is more than just going to the sauna. And I'm also really impressed that uh, Florida International University has a director for well-being. Coming from Norway, and I guess from many other countries also, to a library conference in the USA is both inspiring, but also a little frustrating. It's impressive to see large and well-equipped libraries. The Richter Library at the University of Miami is one example. It is clear that the university has a greater emphasis on the library than many of us are used to. The library is a symbol of academic ambition. At the same time, it seems that the library has an important role in the student's academic and social life. It is also clear that the library has a position as an academic unit in the uh, university. And this is what is both inspiring, but also frustrating, considering that that is, that is not the same uh, way at home. But of course, it can be. We learn from each other, we get inspired from each other, uh, and we come home with new ideas, and that's the point with the conference. And as the keynote speaker, Hilary Hanau said, we are perhaps not in the same boat, but we are sailing, we are not sailing alone. The conference was opened by uh, executive, uh, executive Vice President and Provost uh, Jeffrey Dirk, and uh, he emphasized the library's role in transformation at the university. Uh, as a result of the pandemic, many changes have taken place, he said. Uh, there were changes that were uh, attainable before the pandemic, but uh, which the crisis 
forced us to implement. And the role of the library has changed, he said. The traditional role is the, uh, uh, of the library is like a storehouse of, um, uh, of knowledge. Now it has become a source of knowledge. The library has uh, uh, been given an important role in the university's roadmap for the next century, he said. I hope he's right. Um, and he referred to changes uh, where research uh, teams have been established, all of which have staff from the library uh, within them. He also pointed out that education is just like food. If you get little nutrition in a period of your life, it can harm you uh, for the rest of your life. And young and shapely people come to the university and the library is crucial for their social and professional life. Keynote speaker Clifford Lynch spoke about uh, changes in uh, research. He pointed out that these uh, are perhaps trends that we could see even before the pandemic, but which were exact, uh, exact, exaggerated by the pandemic. He identified some trends, centralizing of uh, research infrastructure, more efficient use of research facilities, change in workflow in research facilities with the use of less people, new labs with less equipment investment, and increased storage in the cloud and sharing of resources. And these trends are important for us to know, but it is trends that comes to the library also. And uh, today's uh, keynote speaker, Nisa Ladakh, uh, confirmed, uh, confirmed, uh, confirmed these trends. Oh, I've just... And when it comes to publishing, Lynch said that the pre-print uh, resistance is gone and video has become normalized despite being a lousy uh, format for communication. Where will conference uh, contributions in video form be in the retrospect? And how will it be used? Because we are uh, going to a paper uh, fast, flip through it. Uh, but it takes a long time to uh, look through a video. Technological development is needed here, Lynch said, and we are waiting for that. Nine posters uh, were presented in a very short time. The invitation was for a poster. Some understood that a digital poster was more of a five minutes Pecha Kutcha presentation which could allow more than one slide in the presentation. Much can be said in five minutes, but it needs planning and focus on your message. But short presentations uh, like this is, in a, I think, is a very good format. And we got a lot of uh, presentations in short time with innovative and interesting projects. Keynote speaker uh, John Lippicott spoke of transforming libraries. And she, I think she quoted somebody else when she said that we must aim to pioneering uh, change rather than just managing uh, change. And she had a lot of examples from US libraries um, for new services and important transformings. And it's all about asking the researchers and the students, she said, what is the important services for you? It sounds easy. Keynote speaker Trevor Davis spoke uh, Tuesday about equity, diversity and inclusion, uh, inclusion, an emerging topic in the USA, but also in many other countries the last few years. And those terms have been central in a lot of the presentations at the conference. Uh, and of course, it's in the mission of a library to be in the forefront for equity, diversity and inclusion, Trevor said, and he def uh, defined the terms like this. Equity means that we accept that we are different, but we also accept 
that there are people and groups that have some disadvantages that others do not have, but they shall have the same possibilities. Equity is equal possibilities. Diversity is embracing that we are not alike, and that we have to go behind what we see. And inclusion is that everyone should be treated just and respectful. I also noted what uh, Mr. Ladakh uh, said today, libraries are per definition, the great equalizer. I found uh, the session with the two presentations on space very interesting um, because I think that the increased digitalization forces a discussion on how we shall use our physical premises. Uh, I commute every day uh, 100 kilometers uh, both ways and sit three hours in a train, but I have all the equipment at home, my computer screens, everything what I need. So going to, to work just to sit in an office and write has uh, no meaning. So the physical space are for people, the cooperation between people and for social contact with people, which many presentations have em emphasized. It has been a great focus on data management. And over the years, the focus has changed from only speaking about open access to scholarly publications to open research, which the keynote speaker Hilary Hanau defined as availability, accessibility, and re reusability. And no wonder that she said that libraries are in the course, uh, core also for open research, openness, accessibility, and reuse is the whole point with the library. Wednesday, we had the study trips. I heard from the who, uh, who attended the Hurricane Center that it was very interesting and impressive. I attended the hospitality trip and experienced a lot of things that I didn't know that I was interested in uh, because I didn't know they uh, existed. For instance, that uh, the Royal Caribbean uh, Cruise Line Center has 500 people coming every day to rehearse for shows on board cruise line ships. And we also met uh, some students and a professor in bartending. And they made us very professional, I would say academic cocktails. Today, uh, the program has had a great focus on workplace and organizational uh, structure starting with uh, Ladakh, who spoke about um, optimizing workspace in an organization that have a staff uh, and an organization dependent on remote uh, workspace. And he said that re working remote could even give challenges for mental uh, health or well-being, but focusing on these challenges could give and that's a new term for me, post-traumatic growth. Yeah. I think he's right when he said that people do not resign to do less, but because they aspire to do more. Uh, but it must be mission-based work. And I look forward to uh, reading Elena and Orlin's book about six steps guide to library and worker engagement. She asked also a simple uh, question, um, whether my organization values, respects and inspire all employees and whether it allows all customers to feel valued, respected and inspired. And she said, we have to look into these answers. If we do not see the answers, we can't acknowledge the problem, and then we can't change it, Elena said. Today, there is a celebration of uh, Princess Ingrid Alexandra of Norway. 
he uh, she uh, turns 18 uh, in my country this celebration and she is the first female here to nor in norway's history and when i say that we go back to the old history when uh, when uh, the viking uh, norwegian viking Leif Eriksson discovered america discovered you uh, some of you was in Oslo when we hosted the IATUL conference, and you maybe saw the big new public library that was under construction at the harbor front. That library has now opened and attracts millions of visitors, but today it's closed because the government has decided that the library should be the place for the official celebration of the princess. And they collect ministers and deep persons, but also a lot of young peoples are invited. And hundred thousands will watch it on television. So why do I tell this story? Because as the princess is a symbol of the future in my country, so is the library for us. Needed more than ever, the future of learning, research, the life of young people, is what we have discussed in this conference, and that is, of course, the future. This was the first in-person conference in Perth in uh, 2019. And in the board of IATO, we were unsecure whether we should go for an online conference, an in-person conference, and we ended up with a hybrid conference, which I think was a good decision. for this year, because there are still traveling restrictions and security and often a lack of traveling grounds. And I think this conference has functioned very well, although it was strange coming from Europe to watch digital presentations from Florida in Florida. <laughs> but today it's difficult to say whether the presenter from Florida perhaps was in home office in Europe or sitting next door, as we just saw. I'd like to thank also, like Anna, thank the organization committee for organizing a very good conference, which have highlighted the important issues of libraries today and giving us the possibility to learn to know each other, not learn people and build network. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lars, for this fantastic summary of our conference. And uh, now I would like to introduce uh, the name of our, 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 um, our attendee uh, from Botswana, Dr. Uh, Ajanda Labelle, uh, participating virtually, received a, an IATO a travel grant for this, for this conference. Now I would like to introduce Gerda Winkler, uh, the member of the Poster Prize Committee, uh, to announce the, the winner. Uh, the Ilmgart Lankenau Prize, uh, the award was established in 2005 in memoriam of the IATO member Ilmgart Lankenau and is worth uh, 500 euros. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the Emirat Lankenau Award for the best poster at the 42nd Idol Annual Conference. The jury consisted of three members of the Idol board, namely Kate Robinson, Lars Egeland, and myself. Um, the jury selected the winner of the poster award based on the following four criteria, content, innovation, design, and quality all over. There were several very good poster presentations and interesting activities and ideas presented at an overall high level. The winning poster convinced the jury due to the high level of innovation of the topic, the clear structure, the professional design and the reflections on the own project. And now, the time has come. <laughs> On behalf of the Post Award Committee, I announce the Irmgard Lankenau Prize of 2022 goes to the poster entitled 
creating Polish working group of the data stewardship competence centers implementation network by the Gdansk University of Technology Library as an example of the community of practice building. Congratulations to Magdalena Szufrita Szurawska and Piotr Krajewski. Let's have a big applause. Thank you so much, Gerda, for introducing the, the poster prize and we, we congratulate the winners of, of the poster. And now I would like to uh, introduce our hosts, uh, Anne Prestemo and Charles Ekman, to uh, continue with, with acknowledgements. On behalf of Chuck and all the members of our program and local arrangements committees, I have the pleasure this afternoon of recognizing and saying thank you to our sponsors. Sponsor at the platinum level, EBSCO. Our gold level of sponsorship, Ex Libris, IEEE, and Elsevier. And at the bronze level, Emerald, Springer Nature, Technology from Sage, and I particularly want to thank Shali and Auburn University Libraries for their bronze sponsorship. And um, I first want to thank Anne for her collaboration throughout this entire initiative. Um, and I also want to acknowledge those others who, who, who worked uh, on this project so we're going to move the screen a little bit with a lot of names, but starting with the local arrangements committee, here are the members of the local arrangements committee, which began working early last year and worked consistently to make sure that things were set up in advance. Also the program committee that includes many in this room that worked to ensure that the program was aligned with the thinking of IATL that uh, that we had a, a, a good uh, honest call for proposals it was well managed and, and neutrally uh, reviewed and uh, I think you can see the outcome was a successful one in terms of the program development and then finally and this is really critical this is a list of names but these are people that formed a team over the course in particular of the last couple of months working very diligently to make sure that this came together they, they were taking a risk with all of us to make sure they knew that they had a lot uh, writing on this. Um, and I think that they pulled it off. And I didn't break this list down into whether they were with University of Miami, with Florida International University. I think they really came together. That was to me one of the messages of this project that was very positive. I think they got to know each other. And they spent a lot of time in the last two months and then they culminated in this room over here and then with all of us. Uh, so I just wanted to have a second to kind of list their names to name them there. Many of them are in this room and I'd welcome them to stand. If you see your name on there or you think I missed your name on there, please do stand so that we can recognize you. Thank you. Um, and then just uh, in addition, I, it didn't appear on this list, but very important to this were uh, Event Factor and the people at Event Factor uh, who helped make sure this all came together technically. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, not just this, but the, the gala dinner as well. They were present making sure that everything came together. And then also, um, uh, our catering groups, Chartwells and InStyle Catering. Um, we saw them and we uh, benefited from their presence in so many important ways. And finally, all the speakers, the presenters, the session moderators, including the virtual session moderators who came in as volunteers, all of the host institution volunteers. There are so many, it's impossible to list them all. Thank you all. And you for attending and participating in this giant risk, both in this room and beyond in the virtual space. So. Thank you, Chuck and, and, and Chuck. Uh, 
Yeah, to summarize, I would like to uh, invite you uh, first to join us in strategic planning process uh, starting uh, fall this year. Uh, you are all invited to the activities we are preparing for you and for, for ourselves. And I would like to uh, also invite you for our future conferences and events uh, for seminar in Zurich, Switzerland, uh, December this year, and, and of course the annual conference in the United Arab Emirates in uh, Dubai and Sharjah, uh, March next year. So uh, save your date and be there with us uh, in, in United Arab Emirates. Thank you so much for being here with us in person and virtually and see you next time.